Welcome to For You Radio, where the gospel's for the believer and the unbeliever alike. Put that down Sorry. right now, mister. He's, he's got a drumstick. It's a drum with with like rubber bands yeah, on it. Yeah, rubber bands. It actually, it's a chopstick with rubber bands. I'm Craig D'Onofrio, pastor uh, of St. James Lutheran Church in the old Brooklyn neighborhood of Cleveland, Ohio. Yes, you are. Yes. And this is my show because <laughs> he's not going to say who he is, apparently. It's, it's all yours. All right. It's all yours. I, I'm, I'm just here along for the ride. He's Troy New Year, pastor of St. Peter's Lutheran Church in Shaker Heights, Ohio. Oh, I am. Yes. Yeah. So now it's our show again, but I really honestly am just here along for the You, You Mr. Extrovert dragged me into this well, several years <laughs> ago. So. <laughs> check out our churches. We'd love to have you come visit. Also check out 1517.org. Great Great stuff there for you and your church and a big conference coming up in October and all sorts of wonderfulness. They are working on a movie now. I mean, it's amazing everything that they're up to, Troy. It's it's, it's crazy. I've not heard about the movie. Radio programs, podcasts, books, now movies, uh, all sorts of instructive videos. 1517.org. I, I don't know what the movie's about, but I'm excited. I, I, I've got to go look this up. Yeah, it's going to okay. be cool. Okay. So anyway, 1517.org, cool stuff there. We are continuing on in the book of Matthew. We're almost done. We're almost almost at the so end of Matthew. Close. So close. And I don't know what we'll do after this. Maybe we'll just quit. It's like we finish Matthew oh, and we're no. done. I had, a, I had a suggestion. Someone said, be sure and do this. And then I forgot. <laughs> you know what? I Hopefully it's in your notes. I don't know. Yeah, well, if you gave Troy a suggestion for a, a program, please let him know again. Uh, <laughs> I even I even think I know who gave me the suggestion, so you know who you are. Just email us and remind, yeah, there you remind go. me. Okay, so anyway, Matthew 27, we're left off at 56, but we're going to back up to 55 and get a running start at it this week. Is, well, it, is yes. there, there There's something I've missed here. If people want to email us, Troy... Or uh, even find us on the internet. Yep. What do they do? Foryourradio.org. Uh, email us at uh, foryourradio at 1517.org. Okay. Very good. Okay. Well back done. To, back to the text. Well done. Okay. So we'll pick up in Matthew 27, verse 55. There were also many women there looking on from a distance who had followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him, among whom were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. Now, Craig. Yeah. You closed out the last show with one minute left to go by saying, hey, there's a bunch of women. Let's talk about this for 45 seconds. <laughs> um, and I got uh, I got cross at that. Uh, no pun intended. Uh, maybe not cross. But we did we did uh, exchange some difficulties. Uh, you, not difficulties. You, you did take umbrage. Uh, I maybe yeah. as a minor umbrage uh, in a friendly camaraderie sort of way. Uh, and then as we studied for this show, I'm like, oh, now I get it. Right. I, I get why we're looking at these women suddenly. Right. Yeah. Right. And so, and you know they're on the periphery. Yeah. But it's not insignificant. And so even at the same time, even the like, way you brought it up with just a minute left, is exactly what Matthew does. It's appropriate. It yeah. just, just it, it was the same identical thing. Just to say, here's this little side angle. Here's this little side shot. The camera there's, has there's slid all, off to the side. Right. There's all this commotion going on, and then the camera pans, and there's these women sitting there. Yes. And then we go to commercial. Yes. we are like, what was that about? It's like, well, what's going on here? Yes. And right? that's exactly what I did. I said, well, what was that about? I, and now I get it. Yeah. So you were right. I was less right. Well, I, I said, you know, as we were talking about this, I said, it's kind of like the Kingsman, the, the latest movie. If you've you seen it. You cannot possibly refer to those movies I'm, on this show. I'm doing it. Uh, <sighs> and there's a network of spies amongst the servants because they're considered insignificant and so they are able to come and go and to hear things that no one else could and then they report back and that sort of thing so anyway this is kind of like this i think that perhaps the disciples said hey ladies go go see what's going on there and come back and tell us maybe you know something like that oh, or they're just really? there because they care and they do and okay. they're, they're very devoted to jesus and probably more brave than the men uh you know Apparently Honestly. so, as we yeah. shall see in several verses. Right. Okay. So anyway, there's that. So all this is going on, and there they are. Um, 
So verse 57, when it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who is also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. And Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen shroud and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had cut in the rock, or as you pointed out, in the Peter. And he rolled a great stone, a great stone to the entrance of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, once again, right, <laughs> were there sitting opposite the tomb. So th- they seem to be popping up wherever there's action. They just kind of intuitively go to that place. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, sometimes your mouth just runs, as you pointed out, the Peter. Like, okay, yeah, because in Greek, the rock is tapetra. Right. right. So I figured it's, it's that you Peter. would flesh that out for yeah. us a little bit. Flesh there, it out. It? Thank you. Yeah. Anyway, so thank you. But the uh, the important part of that is, well, several important things. Uh, one, as you just pointed out, we have this second sort of almost cutaway scene, right, to the women standing idly by. Not... Just, right. Once just, again, the pan, rec- the, yeah. the camera pans, the yes. pan cams the, yes. also, and uh, there they are. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, sitting yeah. opposite the tomb. Right. So we've seen them twice now, and it's about to uh, the the reason for that is about to be made known. But yeah. Before we do that, can we talk about Joseph of Arimathea? Yeah. Who was that guy? Uh, you know, according to Matthew's gospel, we don't know anything about him except he's from Arimathea, Arimathea. Yeah. and he's a rich man. Well. If I were a rich man. I totally just heard that song like last week. All right. Anyway, so. Uh, <laughs> we went there. Did. I don't even know why. Uh, just the way the brain works. We'll uh, have to but, do a uh, whole episode on show tunes sometime. That would be good. Oh, that'd be awesome. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, or where we just kind of sing random references. Oh, could uh, yeah. Be. Uh, but uh, the point is that uh, we know he's a rich man because he has his own new tomb right this and is he, not yes. something that your average, right, yeah. average joe had now we've talked joe yeah, joe joseph, joseph. <laughs> nice <laughs> he's not your average joseph he's the right. rich joseph uh but uh we've talked about this before so uh the the practice would have been uh, ultimately you're buried in an ossuary right a bone box right uh but as we're waiting for sorry as we're waiting for your flesh to decay off of your bones where you're kind of parked on a shelf in a tomb, uh, just waiting. I don't know how long. How long does that take? I don't know. I'm told that marble slabs help you to decay faster. So in a lot of these tombs, you would have a marble Who slab. Who told you that? I think it might have been Paul Meyer. Dr. Oh, Paul Meyer. Okay. Bizarre. Yeah. Just a random thing to bring up. Yeah, anyway, but um, it, it supposedly but, uh, accelerates. Yeah, so, but, but these, uh, these would be used time and time and time and time again. Uh, because hey, it's already cut there. It's not permanent. It's not like not like our graves today, to where you know that's our final resting place. Uh, but uh, to have a brand new one was a marker of some real sort of extravagance. Uh, and it's very interesting that Jesus, in his death, finally gets all of the uh, respect he truly deserves. Right. Right. And. There's Mary and Mary sitting there. Okay. Okay. Anything else about... uh, So he rolled a great stone in front of the tomb. I don't know if that was regular practice or not, but what we get into next is not regular practice. Uh, Yeah. All I'm going to say is Joseph must have been one built sort of guy. If he's rolling a big old rock. Uh, He probably had some servants if he was that rich. Oh, could be. Right. So, hey guys, roll that stone. Yes, he could. Uh, Want us to what? Yes. Uh, yeah. And, and, yeah, and the, and the language would cover that, right? If right. He, he commanded that a great stone be rolled. Yeah. yeah. If you're He's, rich, you don't get your hands dirty with this stuff. You you have the peasants. You know, that's really interesting work. because actually in this particular case, even though he is very rich, he does himself, Matthew say, goes to Pilate, gets down the body, right? So he is getting his hands dirty. Yeah, perhaps he is oh. physically involved with... And, wrapping Jesus here. And by the way, should we point out that he's doing this on the Sabbath and not only the Sabbath, <gasps> but the Passover? That's a good point. What a great show of love that he has yeah. for the Savior. As opposed to... <laughs> Moving on to 62. Yes. The next day, <laughs> the next day, that is after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, oh, wait, wait, wait. sir... We'll, we'll get to that. Oh, I'm sir, sorry, we sorry. remember 
How that imposter said while he was still alive, after three days, I will rise. Therefore, order the tomb to be made secure until the third day, lest his disciples go and steal him away and tell the, and tell the people. He, oh, tell the people he has risen from the dead. There, that makes more sense. And the, and the last fraud will be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, you have a guard of soldiers. Go make it as secure as you can. So they went and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone and setting a guard. Now, all right, I need to recant then. Yes. Because Joseph was Ar- Ar- Arimathea was not doing all this on the Sabbath. He was still doing this Friday. Okay. Preferably in, before the sun went down. Well, it's six, uh, three, three in the afternoon. Jesus is dead. Yeah. So, yeah, this could have been before sundown. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Yeah. He's pushing it, but yes. So because of that very next thing where, where we read the next day that is after the day of oh, preparation. Yeah, good point. Okay. So, uh, yeah, yeah. I was waxing eloquent on something that I should not have been saying. Shame on you. I, but I recant. Okay. R- Rivaco. Well, ego te absolvo. Thank you. Yes. Something about egos. Egos. Great. I love So, egos. but however, on the Sabbath, though, of the, and the Passover... There are some people doing some things that they have no way that they should be doing. Right. What are they doing? Well, for one, they defile themselves by going into the residence of a Gentile. Yes. So that is a no-no. <laughs> oh, and oh, and who does it? The chief priests, right? <laughs> right. Yes. Oh, my and, goodness. Well, and the Pharisees, yes. right? Not just a chief priest. Uh, the holiest yeah. people. Yeah. Yeah. They, they go and do exactly the sorts of things that they were griping about with Jesus. So there. Yeah. You don't uh, keep the Sabbath. You know what? This guy said he was going to rise from the dead. You know, we should probably break the Sabbath and go make sure. Yeah. But you, you figure there's one guy going, but it's the Sabbath. And they, they <laughs> say, well, yeah, some things are more important than the Sabbath. Shut up, Tom. Right? <laughs> so anyway, uh <laughs> They 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 do that, and then also, you know, this is this is would be considered work. This is certainly well. Come on, yeah. You know, I mean, this is this is office stuff here, at least. Well, and you were uh, only permitted to walk a certain number of steps. I'm sure they've broken that one, right? Well, I don't know. I mean, don't 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 put sins on them. That okay. Means. Well, how about this then? <laughs> Defending uh, Pharisees. So they went and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone and setting oh, a guard. Yeah. That is certainly work. The, yeah. Then they're taking a lot more steps with that. Yes. They're, they're, yeah, they're, yes. they're well, not watches just, are yeah. really, really racking up. Yeah. But not just here. steps, but that, there's clearly work involved there. You don't secure a tomb without some work. Right. Yeah. But maybe they commanded their underlings to do it like Joseph of Arimathea might've done. I'm just saying. Uh, just well, they're still, they're still breaking the Sabbath all over the place. Yeah. So and, they and and the, the high holy day of the Passover. They they seal the the tomb or yeah. the stone, and what that would include would be um, probably setting up basically a police tape saying "Do not enter" under penalty of law, and so they would probably stamp it with a governor's seal, uh, with wax and that sort of thing. So if you break the okay. seal. Uh, you are going to face the wrath of Pilate. I see. So this yeah. is not, uh, they're not caulking up the gaps around the stone and the tomb. They they maybe did to some extent, but uh, <laughs> what this would mainly be is like you seal a crime scene with that right. police tape, do not enter under penalty of right. law. Yeah. And, right. And therefore, uh, if that tape, or in this case, the wax seal is broken, we know somebody has entered. Yeah, right. right. And you can't roll away the stone without doing that. So, yeah. Highly than likely. Right. Yes. Unless you have a spatula. Yeah. That's hot. So, I've um, seen it in movies. Yeah. And just the the imagination runs wild there at that point, though. That they're, they're sitting there thinking, uh, we finally got rid of that Jesus guy. And someone says, didn't he say something like, oh. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. And, and, you know, once again, they hear everything, they pay attention yes. to everything, and yet they don't get anything. Right. Right? Yeah. They hear without understanding. And so that's, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. They, they clearly heard him say, I will rise from the dead on the third day. Now, yeah. we enter the final chapter. Ooh, dun, this dun, is dun, dun. That's where it gets good. So excited. This is good. Yeah. Maybe Ooh. Jesus will return before we finish. Ooh. Who knows? No, let's uh, let's That'd let's run great. through. Okay, so okay. twenty-eight, verse one. 
Now, after the Sabbath, toward the dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to go see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then you go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead, and behold, he is going before you into Galilee, and there you will see him. See, I have told you. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy, and ran to tell his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said, Greetings! And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. <laughs> Greetings. Just, yeah. hiya. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you think he like just jumped out from around the corner like, hey. <laughs> yeah. uh, so once again, there's the women. Yeah. Right? So, okay. So women at the little side picture, the camera pans. Women at the side picture, the camera pans. And now we see why. Yeah. They're there yes. to be the first witnesses. And, uh, you know, once again, it, it's kind of masterful the way that Matthew writes this foreshadowing things, you know, and, and it's pretty cool. And this is precisely what you were saying at the end of the last episode, where uh, women being considered at that time second class citizens, their witness, their testimony not being accepted by uh, any court of law. Right. And yet here is two women that Jesus says, uh, that he says greetings to, he appears to, he says, deliver my message to my disciples. They become angels, apostled angels at that. They, they became angelos, yes, right. messengers. messengers. Yeah, they did not sprout wings or anything no, like that. But, no, uh, Oh, by the way, too, I really do hope that the angel in question here, as he appeared, appeared like an angel should. In Isaiah, the, yeah, yeah. the six-winged yeah. fierce six wings. kind. <laughs> six wings, I don't know how many eyes, right? Yeah, Right. Yeah. And, and you know, but there's a good indication that perhaps. Um, well, at the, least then do not be afraid makes a lot more yeah, sense. Yeah, the first thing that angels usually say is, don't be afraid. So, yeah, I'm not... <laughs> yeah. I'm not here to kill you. It's okay. Yeah, you know, I, it's, it's, I don't believe you. I just have a message for you. I know I'm a little scary looking, but just, <laughs> right. you, it'll be okay. Uh, so, you know, once again, this is what the angel says. And it's interesting also that Jesus says the same thing. Do not be afraid when he meets them, right? Uh, yeah. And, and so this may be uh, Jesus who is somewhat glorified at this point, you know, kind of like the, uh, the transfiguration. I don't know. Well, if maybe, nothing else, maybe not. being uh, raised from the dead certainly gives you a new impression that, upon yeah, people. Yeah, that, that yes. could be kind of terrifying. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and let's make this clear, too. You seek Jesus who was crucified. You seek the crucified one. Right. And... This is the Jesus that now appears before them. Not some other Jesus, not some sort of other sort of uh, mystical Jesus. This is the crucified, died, and is now risen one. Yes. And uh, it's important to note also with that, that the Romans had a 100% kill rate with crucifixions. Because if you were the crucifying soldier and you didn't do the job, you were next. So, so they made yes. sure that you were good and dead because otherwise they would be next. And, oh, and, and by the way, too, if your prisoners escaped, you were also the next one. Right. Absolutely. Which becomes important here just a minute or two. Right? Ooh, I like the setup. Yeah. Go ahead and read. Okay, good. Um, verse 11. While they were going, that's the women. Um, Behold, some of the guard went into the city and told the chief priests all that had taken place. And when they assembled with the elders and taken counsel, they gave a sufficient sum of, sum of money to the soldiers and said, Tell people his disciples came by night and stole them away while we were asleep. If this comes to the governor's ears, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So they took the money and did as they were directed. And this story has been spread among the Jews to this day. 
So they maybe wish that they'd kept that 30 pieces of silver that Judas threw over the fence. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, it, well, blood money, lie money. What's the difference? I was There's actually wondering, pieces. like, maybe if this was another 30 pieces of silver. But, <laughs> uh, we have no indication. It's just, right? it's just enough money to buy these two soldiers off. Well, yeah. Uh, and which the promise then, that we will make sure that you aren't killed. Yeah. Right. We'll, yeah. we'll cover for you with Pilate. Now, um, let's, let's understand what's happened here, right? The soldiers have come and said, yeah, there's this bright shining angel dude that rolled the stone away. Um, and now the body's gone. He may have had six wings. He may have, (laughs) he may have had six (laughs) wings. Um, you know, and, and the, uh, the stone that we sealed because you said this guy was going to rise from the dead on today. Uh, It's, it's all happened. Right. And what is their response? Shut up. Yeah. Here, have some bribe money. Go away. Don't tell anyone. Now, how dense do you have to be to to not at least think, ooh, do you think we ought to maybe check this out? Right. <laughs> do, do, this Jesus guy, do, is he actually doing what he said he was going to do? Yeah. Um, that That's very profound there. And the fact that they have seen Jesus raise the dead. They've seen him <laughs> heal people who've been crippled for years. They've seen him heal blind people who've been blind from birth. From birth. Uh, yes. You know, I mean, he's done all of these miraculous things. He feeds 5,000 people with a few fish and loaves and, you know, on and on. And they know about all of this and they refuse to believe anything. And he even rises from the dead. And their first impulse is, we got to kill him again. You know, I mean, that's kind of the whole thing. Is, right, is, yeah. Oh, man, that zombie. We, yeah. we got to we gotta take care of this once and for all. I mean, that's kind of the way that they... It, are you yeah. not aware of anything that's happening in front of you? Right, yeah. <laughs> to, to say, okay, keep that story quiet and instead tell this lie. Right. Yep. Should, uh, I, I don't even know what to say at this point. Well, and this goes to our world even today where mm. you can give people the gospel, yeah. you can give people every reason to believe, and yet they will not. They will not believe. They just refuse to believe. Yeah, yeah. And uh, mostly uh, because they have false notions of who this Jesus is, yes. much like them. Yes. And they have false notions of what it means to be a follower of Jesus, that, uh-oh, I can't have any fun anymore, or whatever, you know. Well, the implications of Jesus being who he is, is um, those implications are large and they are without a doubt threatening to our way of life. Well, yeah. yeah. As, as is the whole Bible, really. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah. uh, okay. once again, you know, the Bible is that book that tells me not to do the stuff that in my sure. sinfulness I think is a lot of fun. Yeah. And uh, yeah. it's very inconvenient, but it's God's word. And yeah. not only that... Yeah, yeah. If I pay attention to it, it's good for me, and it gives me a better life. So why would I not? Of course, that's well, kind of Pascal's but, wager kind of thing. But. but then again, not only, okay, it's good for you and gives you a better life. Yeah, maybe. But also part of that is Jesus himself saying, take up your cross and follow me. Yeah. And so uh, this world reason. will hate you. Uh, and so what a great evangelism tool that is. Well, come, let, let come me also. Come to St. James Lutheran Church and suffer. <laughs> Let me amend that also and say, not only does it give me a better life, but it gives me eternal life. Eternal life, Instead of yeah. eternal death and suffering and misery, yeah. right? Yes, but it, 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 at the same time, it demands you place all of your allegiance upon him and no longer trust and all those other things you used to trust in. But what if I keep putting my trust in those things over and over again and I say, well, well then, gosh, I did it again, didn't I? Then you should keep repenting. Oh, okay. Yeah. And what happens then? Well, you keep getting forgiven. Well, don't I have to make sure that I never do that thing again or else I'll go to hell? See, at this point, we are still then ultimately trusting in Jesus because we know we can come back to him time and time again. Ah, yeah. I see what you did there. Yeah. yeah. But uh, the, uh, uh, but yeah, uh, the, the idea that Jesus has all the power, all the grace, that he takes all the initiative in this relationship uh, is really, really threatening to our worldly understanding. It is. And, uh, and I know that, uh, you know, frankly, that there are a lot of people, and honestly, Craig, probably you and I both 
are just like that, where we kind of refuse to see certain things because it just means it will cost too much. And well, we it all are give like up that. our precious little idol. Yeah. Yeah. We become like Gollum, my precious. <laughs> We can just hang on to it, right? Um, and and what we yeah. find to be so precious is actually destroying us. And yeah. sooner or later, we'll we'll have to give it up, either in this life or the next. It will yeah. it will be taken care of. So this uh, this amazing thing has happened. Jesus has risen from the dead. Uh, the uh, the women uh, react in fear, uh, and yet great joy. Right? Uh, they fall down at his feet, and then. He sends them away with his message. So they, they leave, I no doubt, bewildered, but believing. I think there's something also to the fact that Jesus meets them on the road. He doesn't yeah. meet them, you know, uh, he meets them where they are kind of thing going on here, which is, I think, something that we could look into another time since we only have 30 seconds left. Well, I but, just love the idea that the angel says, uh, you know, hey, you're going to see him in Galilee. And Jesus says, I can't wait. Uh, hey, here I am. <laughs> it's me. It's really me. You know, that's profound because yeah. he's excited too, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, finally, I'm done with that whole suffering part. Yeah. And now comes the joy. Now comes the joy. Right. Enter into my rest. Uh, you, you know, you are my children. So. Well, with that, we have to call it quits. Thanks, Troy. And until next time, God's peace be with you. We'll see ya. For You Radio is a 1517.org production. To listen to this radio broadcast and podcasts and broadcasts like this one, I invite you to visit 1517.org. There you will also find many publications and free resources, including classes on Christian apologetics, church history, philosophy, and so much more. We are completely funded by generous donors like you. Would you consider making a generous gift to our work of spreading the gospel? Simply visit 1517.org.